It might be a bit surprising to you that we talk about the Regex API this late in the course, but still, this is the proper place as we need some regular expressions to experiment with. And if you have no idea how to write a regex pattern, then why would we need to execute it? And given that we've seen the exact and the test methods in action over and over, this video is just gonna be some summary for you. So let's define a regular expression. We can do it with the literal syntax between two slashes. For example, let's make sure that we fix the start and the end of the string and only word characters are allowed inside. At least one word character is obviously needed. In theory, we could just copy paste this pattern into regex2 by using the regexp constructor. Now be very careful because I'm cheating right now. There is gonna be a twist Pay attention to that because this line is gonna be very, very wrong. Okay, this was a spoiler. Spoilers are still worth noting because if you just copy paste the regular expression, it's gonna be wrong. I'll promise you. But to deliver the promise, let's start testing the expressions. So if we use the test method of a regular expression, you've seen that over and over and over, it either returns true or false depending on whether we find a match or we don't. So for example, regex matches the first regular expression, but my website joltnight.eu doesn't. Now comes the surprise. Let's test regex with regex2. What we expect is that we get the exact same result, but in reality we don't. Why is that? Well, let's see another method of the regex API, the toString method. Regex1 is evaluated as follows, the pattern is a hat, a word character, a plus and a dollar sign. In case of regex2, however, we have a hat, the backslash is missing, the w is there, the plus is there and the dollar is there. So what is it equal to? It's nothing else but a w, a lowercase w, repeated as many times as you want, provided that we have at least one w. And indeed, if we test this string, it's gonna be true. So how can we use the regexp constructor? We have to escape each and every backslash that we would use in the literal format. It's super important, you have to have double backslashes. Oops, uh, it's not working because we already used the let before and in the same scope we cannot redeclare the variable, but without the let it's gonna work because we're in the console. If you don't understand this, I recommend that you take my other course, ES6 in practice. There we deal with scopes. In fact, that video is even free on chapter two, I think, or something near the beginning, var, let, and const. Just refresh your memory if you don't know what let is in JavaScript, which is quite unlikely given that we're in a JavaScript regular expression course. So regex2 is gonna be this double backslash regular expression. And now in the two string, you can see that the expected result is there. And if we start testing the strings, we get the same results as before. Let's construct another regular expression. And now we're gonna learn about the exact method, which executes the regular expression and also enumerates the value of every single capture group. So for example, if we have a word, and as many sequences of one Y space and an other word as we want. Then we can imagine that if you have a string, for example, check out my regex articles on jotnoid.eu, then we have a match because this regular expression matches the first word, which is check. And whatever is inside the parentheses and the asterisk, it's gonna match out my regex articles on jotnoid.eu. Now in the return value, number zero is gonna return the full match. So once again, it's the first possible match and it's also greedy. Now, if we fix the start and the end of the string, it, there is gonna be one match anyway, even in case of a global regex. But this EU character appeared as well, which is quite weird. Why does it appear? Well, because whatever is inside the parentheses is gonna be returned and the value inside the parentheses is replaced after matching each and every word. Because we keep on iterating, 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 then we match words one by one. 
first a space, then the word, and we replace the captured string after each iteration. And at the end, we're gonna return the full match at index number zero, and the very last match of whatever is inside the parentheses, which is a space and eu. Obviously, if we didn't have these spaces and multiple words, the exec would return null because no match would be found.